Good morning everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgamash and this is Loveless Special Edition. This game was made by Kane Revol. Revol? I might say that wrong. I will say it right the next time. Uh, this is a game made in RPG Maker MV using the MV3D plugin. And I've been looking forward to this for a long time already. There is a really nice title screen. Uh, the pulsing of the title I could do without after the first after the first three or so pulses. But then like the options menu is nice. Or rather the main menu. The main menu is nice. The options menu has all of our all of our options that we should come to expect and I'm really impressed by all the work that went into it already. Let's go ahead and get some red tone going in the windows. We'll just have them be all red. Hey, that's a high number. Oh yeah, 255. Duh. Well, I want to jump into this and enjoy this game to its fullest, but I do want to give a little bit of an overview of what the options allow. Because we have a lot of options here. We have a lot of extensive options. And these are a mix of all of the standard options that would come with your RPG Maker game. Followers on or off. You're, you're going to let me determine that? We're going to keep them on. I like followers on in most games. Uh, map name position. Let's have it below. Uh, we're not from the ninth circle of hell, so we keep the invert Y axis off. Our look sensitivity, I might adjust that later if I'm allowed. I don't know yet. Um, so we changed our red color in the graphics. HUD numbers get colors. I don't know what that, oh, if on HUD numbers change colors is configured in options. Oh, we'll do that. Uh, render distance, we get to set our render distance in our field of view and we get to set the shadow quality. That's really cool. Thank you for giving me that option. And the audio, of course, that's all fine and dandy. I'll keep everything as is. I don't want to control anything, uh, change anything as far as the keyboard configuration goes. We have the option to check out the credits right now or go to the website. I guess I will look at the credits real quick. Because it's, oh, damn. I'm going to go to uh, New Game because what choice do I have? In the beginning, before the world's creation existed the Titans. These creatures of unimaginable power were capable of incredible power. Each of them contained within themselves the full potential of each element. While they were certainly powerful, of all the Titans, four Titans created the world. The first dynamo surged the storms and created the seas. He brought atmosphere and rain. His power bled through the world with an explosion. So that's our water. Next was Ilnacht. His power tore across the world like a whirlwind. He spread darkness and created the night, his menacing glare hiding his gentle heart. So that's interesting. It's like um, a kind of a merging of the traditional elements. Afterwards came Demiris. Her cold stare blew through the cosmos, bringing rigidity and calmness to the land. She cleansed the world with her radiance. Yeah, that's neat. It's like ice and holy together. Lastly came Ignis, his scarlet flames mislowed across the world, giving life to the creatures and providing heat and warmth for growth. He was the most bashful of the four. At this point, I'm going to tell you this is a demo. Uh, the title of this demo is Loveless Special Edition. I think that the special edition just reverts to the fact that it's a demo, but there will be a couple of uh, proofread errors and things like that throughout. It's not going to impact the quality of the final game. The four titans came together to watch over their new creation for the future, nurturing their land, giving life again and again. Eventually, their creation garnered the attention of the other titans who helped in giving the world balance. Yeah, well, those other titans are just the animals that didn't help the chicken make the cake, and they need to go away. Together with the other titans, the world became known as Gaia, a strong source of the titan's power that... Boring! Oh. I didn't think it was boring. This kid is really rude. 
I like that intro. Very good intro. You've told the story a hundred times already, Papa. Bwah. I guess you've got me there, Galahad. I don't have that many stories well suited for bedtime. Come on, Galahad. No need to be a brat. If Papa wants to tell the story of the Titans, just let him. I just want to hear another story. No need to be mean, Gradhard. Don't you want to hear another story too, Percival? Percival's like, I ain't taking sides. Maybe just a little bit? Dad, can you tell the story of the War of the Ages? Yes, 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 please? Bwah. Well, I don't see why not. Then it's off to bed, you hear? A whole lot of you. This is a grim tale of bloodshed, darkness, helplessness, and heroism. To be honest, most of us do not remember the war's beginning. It seemed to have been lost to time itself, but this was no ordinary war. Though it is called the War of Ages now, it is also known the, as the Thousand Year War, a war that stretched so long even my own father was a part of it, and his father too. Many lives have been thoughtlessly slaughtered, hundreds of soldiers born to die in battle. It was maddening, the ever-creeping darkness that held us humans captive for so long. As you may expect, wars lasting so long have dire consequences. Expansion was impossible, nowhere to flee, crops began to wither, it seemed there was no hope. But then, as if a ray of light appeared, what seemed to be a common soldier made his way into the battlefield. His blade was strong, but his heart was stronger, for you see, he never felled a single foe. Within what seemed like a day, the war that plagued the world had seemingly ended. Many of us came together to honor this man, the soldier known as Ignatius. He claimed that there was a land that flo floated above Gaia, a place that we could retreat and colonize, and he would lead us all there. I had joined him honestly believing that this would be the best way to ensure the safety of my son, you, Percival. And one day, as I was patrolling the ridge of Skyhaven, I spotted two young boys, nearly dead. Would you believe it? Orphaned by this blasted war, they made it all the way up here. Mystical, you would think, but I think it was a sign, as if destiny drew me to you boys. Ah, okay, that's why they like that story. It's about them. I couldn't be more proud. Gradhart becomes a squire in a mere few days. And Percival, you've already begun your training. You're following in my footsteps footsteps well, boys. Galahad, I hope you'll do the same. Yeah, just you wait. I'm gonna be just like Sir Ignatius. Just like Sir Ignatius. Just like Sir Ignatius. Except, I guess, you could say it didn't end up like that at all. Gradhart became a knight so quickly. Even Percival became one as well. He even opened his own training hall to train future knights. I, however, you could say, I was a late bloomer. I had trained so hard, but I couldn't even become a squire when I came of age. I lacked the strength needed, I guess. Or at least that's what they told me. I instead became a jester for the king, oh no. I seemed to have some sort of magical power in me that made the tricks easier for me to do. After a few years, I finally got accepted as a squire, placed into the tutelage of Art Hare, the knight who trained both my, my brothers. I've been training with him for years, and today, today is the final day. I am being knighted tomorrow. Since things have gotten so peaceful lately, some of the knights have been getting anxious, and while they have stopped hazing me, they have begun hazing the other squires. I want to put an end to all of it, and I hope that becoming a knight will allow me to do so. All things considered, though, I am really excited. I've wanted this for so long. Sure enough, I will become a knight and be just like the hero, Ignatius. And now, this is why I was excited to play this. This was made with the MV3D plugin, and as such, all of the maps, besides the one you just saw in the cutscene, are in 3D. Alright, let's get it through today so I'm all set for tomorrow. It should be simple enough, I just gotta make sure I get to Percival's training hall to get some training in. By default, you can move Galahad with the directional buttons or by WASD. You can control the camera with the Q and E buttons for left and right or page up and page down for up and down respectively. This is standard control scheme. Using the camera may reveal secrets and treasure you may not have seen otherwise, so be sure to use it to your advantage. 
That's good. That reminds me of... Whoa, hi. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Um, ah, my WASD doesn't work, but that's all right. Um, it doesn't seem... Oh, found Galahad's secret stash. Obtained five herbs. Galahad... Galahad, no. Galahad, don't do that. I'm just playing. I can't examine the map. And I've got a little bit of lag. Uh, it's not the engine. It's my PC. I also I have a little bit of control over the camera. There we go. This is a really comfy, well-done little room. I like it a lot already. If we look up, we actually have a ceiling, which is really cool. The dev actually put a ceiling in this room. Of course, when we adjust the camera, it goes up above the ceiling and that disappears so we can see our player, but that's super cool. What about this rope on the wall? That's not anything yet. We've got books on the bookshelf. I don't seem to be able to use my Q and E to do the camera rotation, which is weird. I'm going to get into the options and check that out for a second. There we go. That ought to do it. Yeah, that did it. I had to adjust them, or... Uh, Set them manually, but now it works perfectly. Very nice. WASD aren't set. I'm going to do that too real quick. Now, being that I have pointed this out, I bet it probably gets addressed or fixed or what have you. In the next version, let's see if that did it. That worked perfectly. And we don't have to rotate the camera a full 90 degrees. We can have these cool diagonal views, which I love. Look at that. I turned, the, I turned it off. You can turn it on or off. Look at the animation. It's 2D. It's the cross tile type. It's being rendered as a cross tile, but it's animated. And that is, that's awesome. That's awesome. That is awesome. Turn the stove on and off. I could stay here all day and turn this damn stove on and off. Can't interact with the mirror, that's okay. Really well done, well done. The first room is a treat. The first room is a treat. I have no idea what to expect for the rest. And here is our environment. Oh wow. I almost don't want to move the camera around too much because I want to figure out how I was intended to see this. I think I'm going to do this angle. It looks like I have access to a boat right away. Yes, I do. And the peaceful music that comes with having a boat. Um, again, any slowdown can be attributed to my PC. I've got what is basically the equivalent of a Ryzen 5, and I think a 10... 1070? 1060 graphics card? Oh, that's pretty. That's nice. This is the first serious... Um, I won't say serious, ambitious RPG Maker with MV3D project I have really played. I've only played, I think, three or four since I became aware of this plugin. The first was uh, Fractalus. That was actually an ambitious project. I'm, I'm gonna say that that one, that one had a lot of dedication behind it, and I appreciate what the dev was able to do for Fractalus a lot. I need to pre uh, play Fractalus 2.0. That one, that's coming. The version's already out. I just need to go play it. And then I played Toonkini's Bounty, which was a demo for a jam, and I played uh, Stuck at Home, which was actually a lot of fun and really charming and very surprising and really spooky. But this is supposed to be your sprawling epic adventure, an RPG proper. And yeah, like I said, it's the first one of its kind that I have had the privilege to play. There's some chests. Now we're going to get to actually exploring and playing. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Open the chest. Headpiece was found. We'll put that on right now. Look at the custom menu. It's nice. 
It didn't keep my red at all that I asked for. Hmm. Change the mode of the clock. That's nice. I don't need to change that. I'll keep that. We've got a quest menu. We've got available, completed, failed in all quests. I don't want to fail any quests. I don't even like that that's there. You should be able to abandon them and then retake them, but I don't like that you can fail them. You've got a TP men, uh, meter as well as HP and MP. I really like that. I actually prefer having two different meters for expendable abilities. So I really like MP and TP or AP for action points, I guess, ability points. And all your basic stuff, all your fundamentals are here. We've got a nice visual graph of our parameters. We've got a visual graph of our elements. And then our, our on the left there, we've got our attack type, melee. That's cool. That's a, that's a nice feature. I always like when the dev can differentiate melee from, I guess the traditional ones would be piercing and impact uh, ranged. This is probably just going to be like melee and ranged. It's not, probably not going to be uh, giving any attention to piercing, crushing, things like that. We've got eight states. We've got all kinds of attributes. I like that. You have a lot of information available to you. So I can hope that the information here is indicative of the kind of depth that the game will have. Because otherwise, we don't need to see all that info, right? We were going to put on a headpiece. We don't have... Okay, there we go. And I just have fabric clothes. I don't have any weapons or anything right now. We've even got the optimize going on. We've got a lot of good stuff. And look at our character. Our character looks really nice. I really like their... Their clothing. That looks nice. This is an original character made by Kane. They've uh, they've had this character for a long time. So there's been a lot of, uh, not this particular RPG maker sprite, but the character behind it, the OC. So there's a lot of dedication and character development given to this character. Something that I understand. I have some characters of my own that I write about and I, I give them a lot of attention and time and I try to be very careful with how I handle them. Training vest was found. Really? No, no, no. Does the optimize work? It does. It totally works. How about shift? Can we dash? We can dash. We are dashy. I suppose we'll have to go visit this gravestone. Who passed? Oh, we don't know. I can't, uh, I can't actually examine that or I need to get the camera at just the right angle. No, I can't. That's fine. We're ready to move on. By the way, if you have RPG Maker NV, you can grab the MV 3D plugin for free, and you can make this stuff too. You can make maps that look just like this. It takes a little bit of patience, and it takes some learning. There is a learning curve. It's not the most plug-and-play thing in the world, but it does work beautifully, as you can see. Here is map number two. Look at that street light lamp. Let's call it a lamp, not a street light. That is awesome. So we live out in like the marshes. It's kind of like the bottoms. This is Gradhart's home, and we're actually gonna angle up a little bit. Gradhart's not home, but there's a creepy suit of armor. This used to be Gradhart's training armor. You can see he's beating it up pretty bad. I'm oh, good for him. Ah, oh, I love these. Love these, love these. Um, can I turn on his stove? Yeah, if I face it the right way, I'm sure I can. Maybe. No, I can't turn on his stove. That's probably for the best. If I knew that I could do that, I would go turn on the stoves in everybody's houses. I can't ring the bell, but I can take his potion. So I'm gonna do that because, I mean, if your friends don't let you take their potions from their houses, are they really your friends? 
Just you watch. I'll be a knight, just like Sir Gradhart. Sure you will, you punk kid. Oh, it's pretty, pretty, pretty. Let's see if the save function works. It does perfectly. Wonderful. So, I'm going to be playing this entirely through, and I'm told that there's about an hour's worth of content, but you know, if you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you know that I'm very pokey and I'm very slow, and I'm going to be looking at all this stuff in great detail and ooing and awing at all the tiles and graphics. So, unfortunately, I have stretched out this into longer than it probably should be, but um, that gives me a lot more to look forward to. So, I will pick it up again. For now, I'm out of time and I have to go, but I will see you next video. Thank you very much for watching. Until then, bye-bye.